Plasma 5.26 is out and first comes the resizable widgets. Whether it is the application menu or the date, calendar, volume controls, notification center and more, all of the pop-ups are now resizable and they get saved. So next time you click, KDE now remembers their geometry exactly. Now all of the system tray, digital clock and more can be easily dragged to the desktop just like a widget. Kiri has added the ability to rotate and resize widgets also. You can enter edit mode by right clicking and clicking on edit mode or you can just press and hold on a widget to access the edit mode quickly. KD Plasma also has a new widget addition that is the timer. Boiling egg, brushing, making a cup of tea or coffee, coding session, you can just use the timer. Stick it as a widget to the desktop or attach it to the panel and it will push a notification when the time's up. Dictionary widget has a new update. Now you can add multiple dictionaries to the search list and search for any word right on your desktop and it will give an elaborate description. No, 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 no. Inside application launcher, there is the option to change to compact mode. The icons become smaller and the descriptions get removed in this settings. It looks much more compact and smaller in size. Clicking on the text above enables you to view the list of apps that are installed while having all these letters. I mean, you can just jump to the app that starts with the letter by clicking on any one of these options. You can disable the icon of application launcher or add a site text if you would like to and it can be accessed just by right clicking and entering the configuration of these uh, application launchers. And Plasma will remember this even when you switch to a different launcher from alternatives and switch back to the previous one. Now you can change the font size of the clock widget of your panel. Selecting a lower font size makes it look much cleaner. In calendar, you can now enable alternate calendars also. You can select options like the Chinese lunar calendar or the Indian national calendar from the menu. The user now has the option to change volume step. It can be accessed easily by configuring audio volume. Media player widget has a redesign and I think it looks much better. You can pause, forward, go back, enable shuffle and more from the panel itself. But I still don't know why I can't play after I have paused the music from the widget itself. Dark mode settings now has the ability to change wallpapers to the darker edition. The transition is not as smooth as in GNOME, I guess it requires a bit of more polishing. Other than that, the dark mode still looks pretty much the same. There is a small change in the accent colors. They look much lighter when in action. Kiri now has an option to choose color for you from the wallpaper. Now I know it was there previously, but there is a bit of change there. Instead of choosing the average color, it now uses the most dominant color in the wallpaper, which makes it look much more pleasing because previously, uh, because of that average color thing going on, often it would select something like gray or brown, which didn't look good. Overview now allows you to search for a window to find it easily and you can press the enter button which will open the window in front of you. Wallpapers are now applied as a preview when you try to change them. So whenever you click on a new wallpaper in the settings, they, it just gets applied in the background so you can see it as a preview. Before you exit, make sure to click apply for making your changes permanent. Another function is the live wallpapers. Now you can apply GIFs as wallpapers easily to set it in motion. Accent colors also work for GIFs too. Nice. Nightlight has some new features. You can set it based on your location or you can manually set a location on map. It even allows you to change the daytime and nighttime colors separately. Region and language now allows you to modify a variety of parameters from the same place. Under startup and shutdown slash auto start, you can now add lo login scripts and KDE will notify you if they don't have the permission to be executed. You can turn on executability of any script with the click of a button from here itself. Next is new apps. With the release of Plasma Big Screen, there are two apps that are going to be added there by default. Plasma Big Screen is now available for ARM-based devices now, so the reach is low. You can access it through Pocket Market OS or Manjaro ARM. They have the new Aura browser, which can be installed through apt on my device, but does nothing when clicked. Here is a video from the website showcasing the Aura browser. Looks very basic as of now, I guess implementation of pictures in place of colored cards will make it look much better. Plank Player is usable. It is basically a full screen media player. Discover has some changes. You have, uh, you can head over to settings and change the permission for the frequency of updates to daily, weekly, monthly or never. 
the settings page is available inside the settings application and not in Discover itself. Discover now warns you when you try to install an older beta version of an application when an updated stable version is available. It also lets you know when you try to install the beta version of a software. There is a new share card in Discover that lets you share the link of the app through several options that are available. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.